Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inks from IGS Electronics and in this video we're going to have a look at a bit more in depth into V90 drive and more specifically we have a look at how to back the drive up uh, basically uh, upload and download its parameters and talk a little bit about its IP address and how exactly it is controlled and some of the important things that we need to remember when we start working uh, with backups and anything in between so that's what we're doing today, so let's get started all right so to get ourselves started let's talk about a little bit about a couple of ways that we can work and access to drive remotely and one of them is uh, ethernet which is down here for communications purposes with the cpu and also you are able to access the drive via the vassist i have noticed the older version does not support this so if your version doesn't work and you cannot access drive via the ethernet then uh, uh, your uh, uh, drive is not supporting that unfortunately but my one is a fair, fairly new drive so it does support access to it we'll have a look at what is the difference with it and how much you can do with ethernet with this with, with this drive and then you have this uh, usb port in here which most of the people are using for v90 drives and also to uh, get ourselves really get started to understanding how to back it up you can use a micro sd so the way micro sd works you need the micro sd to be completely empty nothing in there can be in that so make sure when you use it you, 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 there's nothing on it so once there's nothing on it once you plug the drive plug the memory card into it restart your drive and as drive will start up it will check if there's anything in the memory card it will read from memory card if there is nothing on a memory card it will load into memory card so it will save all the parameters into this memory card and as it starts up the next time it will always go to the memory card and check what's there and if there's something in there it will always take it from memory card to run a pump it into the drive it's a good way to safeguard in your program if you wish to use memory card in our case we're not going to use that one we are going to be using the usb port our own we check out as well the ethernet port how they both work in both options and what can you that can you what can what, what can you do and what can not you do alrighty so for us to get started let's uh, start up a v assist and for v assist as you can see we have two options one is the usb one is the ethernet connection but now let's quickly have a look at the quick ethernet connections ethernet connections is something that it is interesting but it comes with some limitations that i'll show you in a minute so as you can see in here, it pops up your my Ethernet adapter, which is my uh, host, which is the laptop. So and also the older drive that he has found in that specific network. Make sure these guys, three three sections of the IP address matches the uh, network of your drives. Otherwise, you will have a problems with communications. From there on, as you can see in here, let's click on the drive. You can go into devices information. From this point, where you can is a uh, see your v90 drive name device name and also your ip address if the drive is being set up into a network which is a profi network which communicates with the cpu uh, that v90 drive the device name is very very important because that's what cpu is going to be looking for as soon as cpu will see v90 drive the exact name and wording letter by letter and number by number it will assign ip address to that specific uh, drive that we identified and the IP address is saved inside the CPU. You change one letter in any of this device name, your communication is gone. Now drive is no longer able to communicate with your drive with your with the with the with your CPU and CPU is not able to see the drive. So make sure V90 drive that's very very important device name. Everything else will come from the CPU. The IP address in most cases it's configured to be sent in as soon as the name is identified so do make sure you do know that so from there on let's go to device commissioning within ethernet communications device commissioning is going straight online and it cannot be go offline in here you can commission you can test you can work with your drive but one thing you cannot do you cannot load the any files as you can see my online and offline buttons are grayed out. Also, new project and open project because it's online all the time. So in here, what you can do, you can do all sorts of different things and uh, you can set uh, set your parameters up. You can't have, uh, obviously, network configuration is done in different windows, so that's all grayed out. You can change all the parameters and save them and save them in Roman, things like that. 
So what we can do in here, we can do all our setup with the drive and things like that. Once we're happy with it, what we can do, we can save it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to save it. And we're going to save it here in the in this file already pre-created. So the, all the parameters that already is in here, all these guys in here, these are already been read from the drive as soon as it connects to it. It reads them all live. This is all happening live in here. There's our defaults and there's, as you can see, our, our values that is in drive now. So that's pretty much all we can do. We cannot load anything into it. Even factory defaulting cannot really happen in here. And I'll talk, talk, talk to you in a minute as well how that factory defaulting works. Because if you're trying to do that online, it doesn't really work. And I don't know why. And I'll show you how to default it the way I do it. So that's all with Ethernet connection. So from there on, let's shut this down. So it's no, no. And go into back to VAssist. And go to USB connection now. Once you click on USB, we have option with online and offline, which I already made a video about these communications and things like that. So in here, we're going to go online. So let's click on our drive and go online. What we're going to do is going to try to read all the parameters from the drive now. And here we go. We are alive and now. So one thing I'm going to do, we're going to quickly go on to a, a system in here. As you can see, our number in here, when we move around, we are able to see values changing. And also we can uh, enable the drive. Here we go. And uh, let's click drive home. So you can see everything seems to be working pretty well. It's live. So let's disable it. Just need to properly reset. So uh, as you can see, everything is working. But what I want to do now, I want to reset it properly. So the only one way to properly reset, you need to load default files. And only the only one way to do the way I found to load default files is go offline and uh, go into parameters, view parameters and a factory default as you can see in here the parameters will be restored to the factory default so you will it will change all the parameters that is factory default as you can see in here everything's changed to default you cannot do that while you're doing on online because it doesn't change it so from there on what we can do now is connect back to the drive and remember when you do the factory default the ip address and the device's name is not being touched no and as you can see, now that he has a pumped up uh, the first, uh, compare two parameters for between the laptop and the drive, as you can see, it says there's a difference. It says in drive, you have a value in drive as such, and the factory default is as such. So if you want to load the factory default into your drive, you need to do that. So uh, we're going to do PC, the, sorry, the PC to the drive. Let's pump them all in. And there we go now the parameters has been pumped in and in now effectively the drive has been defaulted to old obviously default parameters you can see all of these here are all defaulted so everything that wasn't there is all being defaulted back but there's one more thing we need to do for this default to fully take effect we need to save it into rom this is very very important if you load any parameters into the drive Make sure it's saved into ROM. If you don't do that, as soon as the system will start up, it will read parameters from ROM and there's going to be old parameters in there and it will override your, all your changes. So make sure that whatever changes you've done, it's saved in ROM. And one more thing we're going to do in here, we give him a restart. So drive now is restarting so we're gonna have a look at it if we are still able to work but remember the communications has not been touched this, this, this is then what not happens because the drive's name device name is there and the ip address has been applied by the cpu so that doesn't change but it could be the other things to change which we're going to check that out now so let's wait to drive to start there we are the communications has been established and let's uh, let's reset are uh, blocks inside the cpu so the reset the drive is, is is it is on so it did came on so it's, it's, it's basically it's still working with this old you know it's struggling it's, it's going on and off on and off there's something's basically the settings that has been pumped into the now it's not really functioning properly with my old setup that i had let's try to reset it again Something is definitely not working in here. My brake is not on. Something is, as I said, it has it's all the settings that I was in the drive has gone now. So let's reset again. Let's give me home it. 
the homey doesn't work as again it stops so all sorts of things are happening in function uh, in my function blocks inside the cpu that basically the settings that was in there that all that was communicating is gone now so now let's fix that so we need to load in our old file that we already backed it up so to do that let's go into uh, we're offline now yeah we are so let's load here is our v90 drive backup that's the one backup that we did so again we we, uh, we loaded in a new file new parameters has been uh, loaded into the project and we go now into the drive in here and click ok and it's gonna again do the same process it's gonna connect to the drive and read all the parameters and here we go as you can see all the parameters have popped up says the again in this time is other way around we have a values that from project to be transferred into the drive to, to be overwritten so uh and now our new values that are are from our pre-save project from before is coming up with all of these now so we're gonna say pc to drive again so now it's loading in are a backed up values that we backed up before we erased the drive before now that we've done that remember we still need to make sure we save it in rom it's very very important it's saved in rom otherwise it will not work and believe me i'm the rookie to making that mistake forgetting to save in rom and for the next restart system starts up and nothing works so be aware that's very important now that we've done that let's restart the drive here we go let him do his thing and we're gonna see if our system working now Right, here we are. So uh, there is our screen. So the first thing we want to do, we want to reset reset everything. So here we go. That started up. Let's disable the drive and see if the numbers move with it. Uh, there we go. So the digits are moving. So all our values now being working properly again. And if everything went well, so we uh, uh, enable our drive and let's see if it homes. And it does. So everything's been restored and everything is working as it should do. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will do for this video. This gives you a good rundown of how a V90 V Assist works. It is very confusing very, at the very beginning to, to, with this Ethernet and then with this USB and how to factory default. It took me a while to get my head around it, but I think I'm pretty sure that I have worked it through pretty well to understand what Siemens is meant to really try to explain how it all works it was very weird when i was trying to default while i was online it was showing that he's doing all the work and going backwards and forward and every time i restarted everything was still the same nothing was changed so i just i just thought you know what the best way is go offline default it and then load the old default files into the drive and that way everything worked perfect well and that will do for this video thank you very much for watching if you do enjoy the video do smash that like and do subscribe if you're new to the channel and i'll see you next one